A few weeks, then summer will be over. A play for radio by Colin Shaw. David. Coming! Thomas. I wondered who it was. Something the matter? No, no, bless you. Could I come in for a moment? Yes, if you want to. No, I'm not disturbing you, am I? No. Come in, I'll shut the door. Oh, thank you. Where's Mr. Lucy? He had to go out. Oh. It's, uh, it's warmer down here. The evenings are cooler. I suppose you heard the row. Oh, I did. But you mustn't upset yourself. I know these things happen. But why, Thomas? Why so often lately? Now that I can't tell you. We both hate it, and yet we can't help it. Row, row, row. Must be pretty frightful for you, living on top you, of us. You mustn't upset yourself. I had some news. Oh. Yes, they've agreed to take me. Thomas! Mm -hmm. My daughter wrote this afternoon by the second post. She says they'll have me. Well, that's good news, isn't it? Oh, I ought to think so. Well, they look after you. You'll be much more comfortable. And they're giving me my own room with my own furniture. When do they want you to go? Tomorrow morning, about a quarter to nine. Yeah, Mary said it's better to get it over quickly. Stop me having time to think about it. She's right, really. Jane, would you do me one favour? Of course, Thomas. What is it? Be here in the morning when I go. See me off, will you? Certainly, if you'd like me to. Yeah. Uh, I've got so used to being on my own, pleasing myself. Look. I'll make some coffee. No, 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 I won't stay. Thank you. Now, I just wanted you to know. I'll go back now. Just a few more things to put away, and then I'll go to bed. Well, if there's anything we can do... No, 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 there's nothing. I've been round to the landlord's office, so that's out of the way. Hey, is that him? No, I shouldn't think so. Hello, Jane. Can oh, I come in? Yes, I'd better be I suppose oh, so. I'm sorry, I didn't know you had a visitor. That's all right. Thomas was about to leave. Edward, this is Mr. Carvel, who has the flat upstairs. How do you do? Good evening. I must go now, Jane. All right. Good night. Good night. I'll be here in the morning. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Thomas. What did the old man want? He came to say he was leaving. He's going to live with his daughter. Well, I don't suppose you'll miss him. No, I don't suppose we will. It's rather terrible, really. I've seen him every day for more than six months, and I don't suppose I will miss him. How long will David be? I don't know. Perhaps half an hour, perhaps an hour. I hoped he might be out. I wanted to tell you something. They've made me our director. Congratulations. You must be very pleased. And you? I never had any doubts about you. Yes, they're sending me to Canada for six months. It's all beginning to move for me, Jane. I want you to come with me. I'm not leaving for another three weeks. Is that why you came here tonight? To ask me that? Look, in three weeks you can settle everything here. Are you saying that leaving David is just settling everything? Well, it has to happen sometime. The longer you leave it, the harder it will be for both of you. David will grow more dependent on you. And I on him? I don't doubt that. Harder for you, harder for him. Why should you assume we want to break it off? Do you need me to tell you? Yes. Yes, I'd like you to tell me. Because he's a rising young executive who came to a dead stop five years ago. Because staying with him means a lifetime of flats like this one. Because he's got a wife already. And because you're 24 and he's 37. You'd better go. What did you have the row about tonight? Row? You've been crying. It wasn't important. But it wasn't the first one, was it? No. Think over what I said, Jane. I still want an answer. You haven't once talked of loving me. That hasn't changed. Well, good night. And don't bother to see me out. Edward, there's no point in coming back. I shall, though. Good night. Damn. 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 Jane, where's the sugar? <gasps> Oh, for God's sake, wake up. Where's the sugar? What? I can't find the sugar. Your dress. Yes. Where is the sugar? 
What's the time? It's after eight. It isn't. Oh, the sugar. What have you done with oh, it? I don't know. David, last night we promised we weren't going to have another row. Yes, yes, I remember. It's terribly important, David. I was very frightened last night after you'd gone. Mm, I know. I know. Oh, look, you haven't shaved. Oh. Give me my dressing gown. I'll look for the sugar while you go and shave. All right, here. Thank you. You don't have to get up. Oh, no, I must. Besides, they're sending for Thomas today. I said I'd stay. Who's coming? His daughter and her husband. Where are my slippers? <laughs> here. Well, thanks. Go on, go and shave. OK. I plugged in the toaster. It's probably very hot by now. Oh, I'm off toast. Diet for me. One of the Bulgarian dry biscuit things. Philippa says they're marvellous. She says she's lost pounds. Every time I see her, they seem to have crept mm. back again. Come and shave in the kitchen, then I can talk to you. How many pieces of toast do you want? Oh, wait a minute while I find a towel. What? I said, how many pieces of toast do you want? Oh, um, two, please. You're terribly bright in the mornings, darling. I don't know how you manage it. Springing out of bed. Oh, I'm past the age of practically everything else. Nonsense. You're quite remarkably good for your age. Ta-da. When interviewed in the fashionable kitchen cup bathroom of his Bayswater home, he told our reporter he put it all down to... What do you put it all down to? Uh, an even temper. <laughs> I know you have a lot of good qualities, darling, but I wouldn't put an even temper among them. Mm. What are you doing today? Here I am. Triumphant product of education, emancipated from almost everything. And I don't know what my day's work's going to be. I'm not sure female emancipation wasn't a big step backwards. You, and where would you be without female emancipation? Not going to bed with me every night for six months. <laughs> I doubt whether Mrs Pankhurst would want to claim that among the fruits of victory. Do you find the sugar? Mm, it was in the tin mark flour. Oh, I might have known. Oh, by the way, if it isn't too sharp a reminder of domesticity, I have some socks that need mending. I'll do them at the weekend. Now, darling, I can do the socks myself before the weekend. I need them. Nobody's going to notice. I'm going to notice. No, I can't mend socks. I'm sure that secretary of yours, Miss Sir Cartwheel... Hawthorne. Oh, I'm sure she's absolutely marvellous at socks. She has a marvellous at socks kind of voice. I rang the other day in a temper. You weren't there. And Miss Cartwheel said in a voice like the Albert Hall organ... He's on a computer course. Coffee, please. Sorry. Do you know, Peach's editor was going yep. to make a pass at me yesterday. You know, the tall one you met at the office party oh. with a chip and the MC. What makes you so sure that chap was going to make a pass at you? The way he spoke, mm -hmm. at the back of his throat, you know. And the way he looked at me. Oh, yeah. It's funny. I suppose people know about you and me, and that makes me somehow fair again. I see. Oh, it isn't like that at all, darling. Really, it isn't. All right, all right. No, it isn't. Now you're being understanding. Well, I thought there was something to be understanding about. Isn't that what you wanted? No. Yes. There. Yeah. Makes you sound old. Well, I'm older. You don't have to flay yourself with it. <sighs> David. Mm? I sometimes wonder. It's a kind of panic. Why did you want to come and live with me? Do you want to know the truth? Yes, I do. And really the truth. Not just the things you talk me onto my back with. They're true. They're nice, anyway. David, aren't you going to tell me the truth? I should be late. Oh, there's a paper. Are you going to fetch it, or shall I? No, I'll go. <sighs> Paper's here, but not the post. Do you want it? No, no, you read it to me. Uh, Sagittarians may vary their habits with advantage. Hmm. And those born under Leo would do well to avoid romantic entanglements. Was there? Well, that's a little late in the day. Oh, there's a button off this shirt. Where? Yeah. Well, it won't show under your tie. Oh, what I admire about you is your intense practicality. The fashionable, pragmatic touch. Right, Sir Friend. You should have told me Edward was here last night. Edward? I'd like to know. Why? Simple curiosity. Simple curiosity. Until... Polished. He was leaving as I was coming back. You didn't come in until hours after Edward left. Well, I went away again. I... Well, I, I went and had a drink. I made up my mind not to mention it. Why'd you mention it now, then? Because I wanted to know what he was doing in my flat. Oh, All flat. right, our flat. I don't see that it matters. Oh, but it does. If it didn't, I shouldn't be paying half the rent. That was the arrangement, if you remember. What did he want? He's got a new job. He came to tell me they've made him a director. Whoopee. I'm sending him abroad. Was that all he came for? Well, congratulations. He could have sent himself a telegram. 
He wanted me to go with him. Are you? Damn you. Damn your ambitious friend, too. He took me to a May ball once. About four in the morning, we went to his digs. Object vaguely defined. <clears throat> but when we got there, we found his landlady up getting her husband <laughs> up to work. <laughs> so the four of us sat in the kitchen drinking tea. Edward in hard tails and me in a long, slinky blue dress. Edward's landlady was in a dressing gown plus curlers. And her husband was in well-pressed overalls, as if he was going on parade. When he'd finished his breakfast, he looked at the two of us and said, You've got all the time in the world. It's all right for you. Didn't say it resentfully. Just a statement. And then? Oh, then he went off to work and we went back to the ball. And I got a chill from the wet grass. <sighs> Miss Fletcher in autobiographical mood. Mr Lucy Borish. What are those bloody socks? Aha! They're in the bedroom. Mm. Mm. Just to restore your good humour. Thank you. Temporarily displaced by the thought that you might not be supreme in the lady's affection. Nothing of the kind. I don't like Edward Scott. And I'm not going to be won over by anecdotes about silver-tongued old railway men. <laughs> I hate you. Mm. That's a sound basis for a permanent relationship. I didn't understand then what the old man meant about having all the time in the world. But now you do? Yes. Because you do, don't you? Yes. <laughs> what? Darling, you've left some soap in your ear. No. Hey, no, no, stop. <laughs> what should... No, Lena. <laughs> no. where, where do you come from? You know very well where I come from. It has grey roofs, she told me. And there are cobbles in the streets, and, and there used to be trams when you were a schoolgirl. And 30 years ago, if you'd been living then, you'd have... Um, Left school at 13, you'd gone into a factory. And at 20, you'd have had three children. Now look at you. Well? Well, here you are, wandering around, half-dressed, with a man old enough, well, with no great show of precocity, to be your father. Come on. You really are going to be late. Jane? Yes? What about Edward? We'll have to go on to glory without me. Hmm. Very satisfactory. I'll go. Are you not properly dressed? Never mind. It's probably only the post. Oh, my God, it isn't as late as that, is it? No, no, it's just... Well, I wondered if Mr Lucing was here. Yes, come in. Who is it? It's Thomas, darling. I thought I might miss you if I left it any later. I told David you were going. Oh, I was very sorry to hear it, Thomas. I told myself it's for the best. Sit down, there's plenty of time. Oh, thank you. Have you finished packing? Yes. It isn't really goodbye, Thomas. Well, we'll come and see you at your daughter's place. We said so. Yes, thank you. I wanted to thank you both for everything you've done. We haven't done very much, Thomas. You've been so independent. Yes. I was trying to put some things on one side. Things to take with me. Sorting them out, I thought, it's like the ending of another chapter. Not a very long one this time. How long, Thomas? Six years altogether. Long before you two came, of course. See, the wife died and I couldn't keep the little house on. I couldn't do right by the garden, you see. At the end... It would have broken her heart to see it. <laughs> like a jungle, the rose beds were. She liked all the flowers, mind you, but roses were her special favourites. They lasted longer, for one thing. Christmas time some years, and we'd have roses on the table. As for the other flowers, she used to say, a few weeks, then summer will be over. Has your daughter got a garden? Uh, oh, yes. Well, they'll be glad to have your help. No, no, it's the interest that's gone. You lose interest in time. Well, now, look, I mustn't keep you. You've got your work to do, Mr Lucy. We will come, Thomas. Yeah. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. I'll see you later, Thomas. Call me if you want anything. Yeah, thank you. Poor old man. Oh, he'll be all right in a day or two. He didn't believe us when we said <clears> we'd <throat> go and see him. We will. Once or twice, to begin with, and then there'll be plenty of reasons for not going. We shan't have anything to say, and we'll be embarrassed, and he'll be embarrassed. Oh, why is it so hard for people to talk to each other? What time will you be back? Oh, not late. Before you, probably. We, uh, we might go out, have a meal somewhere. In the money. Enough. Bye, darling. Goodbye. Here, don't forget the paper. What? Oh, no, thanks. Bye. Bye. Mm 
Good morning. Edward, what do you want? Can I come in? David's just gone, but I suppose you knew that. I waited until I saw him going down the street. Well, now you're here, you can help me with those plates. Take the tray over to the sink, will you? Oh, yes, yes, of course. I thought you might tell me to go to hell. I may well do just that. There's a tea towel somewhere, over there, behind those pans. Yes, I found it. What did you come to say this time? I wanted to know if you'd thought over what I said to you last night. There wasn't any thinking over to be done. You sat in David's flat, in David's chair, and asked me to leave him. I said no. That's that. Well, that's not fair. Oh, yes. And you implied that it was for my own good. Hell, well, it... It wasn't meant to sound like that. Well, can't we leave these damned dishes? There aren't many, and they have to be done. I have some responsibility to leave the flat tidy for David. Incidentally, he saw you leaving last night. Well, why didn't he say something to me, then? He decided to play it by the rules. We have rules, David and I, based on complete non-interference. Each of us does what he wants. We tell each other just what we want to tell. So he decided to say nothing about seeing you. And you decided to say nothing about my coming to see you? Exactly. Then how do you know he saw me? Because he had to tell me this morning. I told him he wanted me to go to Canada with you. That seems a little direct. David and I are always direct. I think that's what you've never understood about us. Cups and saucers go in that cupboard. The cups hang up. I've never understood anything about you and David. I don't know whether you went to him or if he came to you. I only hope. He realises how lucky he is. I know how lucky I am. But one day, Jane, for all the reasons I gave you last night... One day. Some day. In the meantime, I like living with him. Do you mean to have children? No. Then it's irresponsible. Oh, what are you laughing at? It's the second time I've heard that word this morning. And what kind of responsibility would it be if I had children? It's too soon. I don't want to be responsible yet. Lots of women have to be by your age. And I don't. David said this morning that 30 years ago I'd have had three children by now. Well, it hasn't happened. I've been liberated. Isn't that it? And I've been dispossessed. That's what they never say. Well, I need to work it out. You're not the only one. I'm the only one I have to care about. All right. Let the others settle for the things they think they want. But don't ask me to do the same. And what about David? Is he part of the working out? And what about his wife? No, Edward. Don't let's go on to that bit. You can hang up the towel if you've finished. I have to make the bed. I just don't understand why it Nor to be do you. I. But I'm not sorry it was. Well, there isn't much point in my staying any longer. I don't know if I shall see you before I leave. They may want me to fly out on Sunday. I thought you said three weeks. It could be sooner. I see. I hope you manage to make a success of Canada. Oh, I expect I shall. I'm sure you will. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jane. Well, you were going to say something else. Thirty years ago, with those three children, I wonder if you'd been any less happy. Luckily, neither of us will ever know the answer. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you've sorry. got a visitor. Mr. Carvel, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, yeah. I'll leave you then. Goodbye. What is it, Thomas? Oh, I packed the radio and I'd got nothing to do. I wondered if I could wait here. Yes, of course. You'll have to talk to me while I get dressed. You sit down in here and you can shout at me in the bedroom. Yeah, all right. My son-in-law's no great conversationalist. More a talker, if you know what I mean. I shan't get many words in while I'm there. You'll manage. Hmm. Perhaps that's your daughter now. Would you like me to go? No, I'll open it. Miss Fletcher? Yes. My name's Lawson. My wife told me to call here about my father-in-law. Oh, yes. He's in here. He came down to wait for you. Mind if I come in? <laughs> no, please do. Thanks. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Sydney. Ready for the off, then? I've got to bring my cases down. I'll give you a hand. No, I'd rather do it myself. You wait here, if the young lady doesn't mind. No, I don't mind. I is Mary downstairs? No, she's at home. Not ill, is she? No, not ill. Busy. There's always a lot to do. 
Now, you go on upstairs. If you need help, just... I got in on my own. I'll get out on my own. I'll tell you when I'm ready. Stubborn old man. He's a bit upset. I dare say. He must have left home very early. Wanted to get it over. Good military maxim. Move early, hit them hard, if you know what I mean. Yes. Uh, uh, cigarette, Miss Fletcher? Uh, Mary and me, we're very grateful of your kindness to the old man. We've hardly done anything for him. Oh, I can't believe that. Uh, let me give you a light. Thank you. I don't suppose you've seen a lighter like that before. That's the regimental crest. Ah. It's a souvenir, you see. It's very nice. Given to me when I was demobbed. <laughs> of course, that'd be a bit before you'd remember. The boys of the unit clubbed together to give it me. I don't mind telling you. I had quite a lump in my throat when they did it. I'm sure you had. Uh, you don't mind me talking on like this, do you? No. I don't suppose the old man will be much longer. Uh, I met the wife during the war. She was a good sport in those days. Still is, for that matter. Uh, this, uh, this business of her father, it's shaken her. Shaken? Well, I don't mind telling you. I said to her, it's for the best, I said. You see... She was willing to have him at our place, but I said... You mean he's not going to stay with you? No. Mind you, he doesn't know it yet, so it's just between the two of us, you and me, at the moment. But... Uh, we've got him into a nice little home. Only 30 old gentlemen in it, and only about half an hour from our place. A full-time matron and a qualified staff. And when are you taking him there? Uh, today, right away. That's really why Mary wouldn't come. The thought of it upset her. But she's going along to see him tonight. You can't just take him there this morning. You've got to talk to him first. I'll tell him when we're in the car. It's for the best. But he's expecting to come and live with you. Now, you've been kind to the old man, Miss Fletcher, but you don't have any right. I'm not claiming any right. I'm saying that you have no right to... to shove him into this place without giving him time to think what's happening to him. What good thinking going to be to him? He hasn't got any alternative. He can't stay with us. He can't stay upstairs. It's a miracle nobody's complained already. It's, it's filthy there. And anyhow, we're putting him in a nice place. Mary and I went to see it. And she asked specially if it had television. And did it? Oh, yes. And a bar, which they open on Saturday nights. Home from home. Oh, for God's sake. Now, miss, please stay out of it. It's our family and we'll decide. I know that. But you don't understand. He'll hate it. Do him good, a bit of companionship. Couldn't he stay on here? In the flat? Or if he paid someone to clean up for him? He hasn't the money for that. I could go up myself. If I said that I'd... Every day, miss. That's what it needs. Oh, it's an easy thing to say now. You mean it, I'll give you credit for that. But every day, and sooner or later, he'll have to go. He's an old man. Isn't it better now? While well, he can still make friends with the other old men. There'll be so many rules. When to get up, when to go to bed, when to wash, He's when to... He's got to accept that. You ought to tell him first. So I shall, but in the car. Help to make up his mind if he's in the car. You're trapping him. It's, it's being cruel to be kind. Put it that way, if you like. Seems so unfair. He'll see it our way, Mary's and mine. Just as you've done. But I haven't done. Look, miss, you aren't going to say anything, are you? No. I'd better let him in. Hello, Thomas. Have you got everything? There's just the two suitcases in the parcel. Right, then. We can be away. Shall I come down with you? No, you stay here. You've got to be off to work soon. Goodbye, then, Thomas. Goodbye, my dear. Uh, there's the key to the flat. They'll be sending someone round for it later. We'll come for the furniture later, Miss Fletcher. And if you and Mr Lucy can't find the time to come, I'll understand. But right, if you have a moment. Uh, give me the suitcases. Right. Uh, goodbye, Miss Fletcher. Uh, nothing else you want to say to him? No. I said you'd see it my way. It's the only solution, isn't it? Now, uh, be careful with that case, Dad. It all may right, break. Right. Uh, put your hand under the bottom part of it. That's it. It's all right. Oh, I yeah. can manage. Right. Oh, my God. Hello? Put me...
me through to Mr. Lucy's office, will you? No. Don't do that. Just give him a message, please. Tell him Miss Fletcher rang. Tell him she just wanted to talk to him. No. No, there's nothing else. Just to talk to him. That was A Few Weeks, Then Summer Will Be Over by Colin Shaw. Production was by Ronald Mason. <laughs>